So karma has a very powerful effect. And therefore to get ourselves from the very world of karma, from the three worlds of karma, we can only be lucky if we find a perfect living master who takes us beyond that. How does he take us beyond that? How can he be using some special instrument or special mean that he can take us beyond this, beyond the very process of mental creation and universal mind? And he does it by a natural faculty that exists in the soul and that is the faculty of love. What is love? We, I, use the, I see the word being used everywhere. I love my house, I love my car, I love my kids, I love my... And I love you so long as you love me. Have you done something for me lately? Then I love you. <laughs> if you haven't, then I don't. This use of the word for another word which is attachment is a misnomer. You see, I should say I'm attached to my house, I'm attached to my dog, I'm attached to my car and I'm attached to you also. That's correct. But when we say I love you, it is not love at all. Why? Because when you say I love you, look at this, what the mind is saying. Mind is saying there is I, there is you, and there is something happening between us called love. That's attachment. Who are you experiencing when you say I love you? You are experiencing I first. Then you are experiencing a little bit of love and you. Isn't it an egoistic trip? When the I is most prominent and the I is holding your attention and I love you. I did this for you. I did that. Is the I becoming more important? It can't be love. What happens in love? I, the ego, takes a backbencher. You occupy my awareness to such an extent. I can't think of anything else. Love identifies with the ob object of love. Love identifies you with this beloved. You can't think of anything but your beloved. Then you are in love. Love takes away the I. In love you don't say I love you. You say you, you, you. You can't think of anything else. This is clear distinction between love and attachment. But we are calling our attachment as love all the time. So where do you experience this love? You really experience this love with your soul, not with your mind. You can't think into this kind of love, no matter how hard you think. But you can experience love because you are spiritual right from the beginning. It just comes. So long as you have a soul, you are lover. You love and you like to be loved. It's automatic to the soul. Therefore, these perfect living masters do not operate from the mind. They do not operate from the three worlds. They operate from the area where love is so powerful. And they employ it right here. It's not that we have to go to Parbrahm to see love. Love is here. All the experiences are already here. And we get glimpses of them from time to time, including love. So love is so natural to us. It belongs to the spirit. It belongs to our soul. That the masters touch that to take us beyond the law of karma. Beyond the three worlds. Because the three worlds don't contain it. It belongs to Parabrahm, to the soul and beyond. So that is why you will notice that a perfect living master comes in our life and teaches us. He becomes a teacher. Though frankly, he does not come as a teacher. He doesn't want to teach anything. We want to learn from a teacher. It's our requirement, not his. A perfect living master came. Here's a marked soul. I'm taking him home. Okay, what next? Master, I want to learn how to go home. Okay, I'll teach you now. Then he teaches to satisfy our mind. Teaches to satisfy our body. Teaches to satisfy just what we have here. We can't see anything beyond. He teaches and then ultimately we forget about the teaching. We fall in love. And he draws us with unconditional love. A love we haven't experienced. Because all love that we have experienced was attachment with conditions on it. And here is unconditional love flowing. At the end, as we make progress on the spiritual path, we find nothing else matters except the love we are experiencing. Love is the answer to all our things. We never realize that. And then love pulls us beyond the mind because it originates from beyond the mind. 
Therefore, the method, the modus operandi of the perfect living masters is different from all other teachers who teach what the mind wants and they give you what the soul wants. And they ultimately, the distinction is that you can be under the training of a guru who is only gone to the causal plane, he'll give you rigid discipline, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that, follow this, strict discipline, stay in the ashram, stay there, and he gives you guidance strictly on discipline which the mind likes. It may dislike but says I have to follow it to achieve something. Love is lurking behind somewhere. It's not being pulled by that. But when you meet a perfect living master, the experience of love overwhelms you and makes all this unnecessary. You start with struggle, teaching everything and end up relaxing in a state, bathing, bathing in love. You feel it's it's not like surround sound, it is surround love (laughs) all around you. And that's the experience you have with a perfect living master. It's quite distinct from experience with most of the teachers. And I've gone through several layers of these experiences with different teachers in my own life. So I know the distinction. One is for the mind, the other is for the soul. Soul wants love more than anything else. Mm.